um, unquote. Do you agree with, um, with this analysis uh, about the motivations? Because if you misread who you're trying to reach, if you misread their motivations, uh, this has dire consequences for an election. How do you analyze the uh, 6.9 million voters? So again, in Sri Lanka, the previous government had failed and failed in an extremely dramatic way that should have, by any rationale, caused that government to fall. Like that government had no business standing up. However, in a two-party system, sometimes your only choice is worse. And yet, that what other choice can you make? How can you reward a government that like, and, and even with the Easter attacks, you could say that Mahinda having that sort of coup and attacking parliament, that destabilized the government such that we were open to such an attack. And I would say that is true. However, still, a government, when that happens on their watch, and when they're so wildly incompetent, and I remember the next day, Ranil was on, in Parliament and he was laughing. He was making jokes. Like, the idea that I would ever vote for someone like that again is, is crazy, right? So, there's those forces also. It's not, like, material events drive ideologies, and ideologies drive material events. But I don't think it's not as simple as, like, oh, the Sinhalese are so happy about, the Sinhalese Buddhists are so happy about keeping Muslims down that... That's the only reason they vote. Now, I know people who are quite racist against Muslims. That's actually fairly common. I've had, especially older people, say, like, oh, don't do business with Muslims and stuff. I, I assume you know people yeah, like this yeah, also. We've all been there. So this is all there. But the question is, like, at what point does it surface? And the danger within, like, representative democracy is that, like, the class divide is, like, the, the working class against the capitalist class, that's not touched. And the SLFP, which was a once leftist party, is now, they're all pretty much like one soup of like neoliberal, essentially like rightist parties now. So that's not touched, and that's the real problem. And that's causing real tensions. But as what Aaron talked about is like, then you just need some story to help you make sense of like what's going on, if like things are not going well for you. So a simple story is to just say it's based on race. And this is something colonially invented, mm. like divide and conquer. Mm. It's, it's highly effective. Like, they used it to divide and conquer the whole world. Of course, it works within Sri Lanka. And even this, like, representative democracy thing, it obviously keeps having this problem. Like, if, if you can, if a certain group of people can just vote to screw the other people, then there are some advantages to that. And if you say, like, Malaysia, like, like the Bumiputra policy, there are real advantages to that. If you have, like, like, there are advantages. There's advantages in business. You can use that competitively. In Sri Lankan business, if you, want to, if you have a Tamil competitor or a Muslim competitor, you can accuse them of being LTT. Mm -hmm. You can accuse them of, like, being some terrorist or something. And then, like, that can give you material advantages. You get preferential treatment from the, from the, from the Grama Sevika. You can get preferential treatment, like, in terms of business, in terms of any interaction with the government, in terms of interactions with the police. So the idea that there's, like, no benefits 